I guess, I don't know where I got that idea from. Oh yeah, I remember. I have a friend, Saj Awan, and he's back in the late 2010s, he started doing commercials for a competing show out of Las Vegas. We were doing the Com Commodore Vegas Expo, and this competing show wanted to step on our toes by having their own show at the same time. I went, no, and he would do commercials for his show. I said, no, we can't. They're, they're doing commercials for their show and putting it up on YouTube. We have to have competing commercials also. So even though the competing show is gone, we, s we still do our common commercials. So let me run the commercial fully if you haven't seen this. It only takes a few seconds. So I tried to limit the commercials for under a minute. So here goes. Let's see, here goes. The Commodore Los Angeles Super Show. There is hope for you yet. Perhaps in several thousand years, we shall meet and reach an agreement. You are still a savage, but there is hope. Sorry, I can't get more volume. RJ for the win. RJ for the win. So let's let's go through this a little bit by a little bit. This this will come a, kind of like a film study course here. So let's see how that was done again. I do love your suggested videos you have. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So this the the Commodore C here flying through here. Yeah. Actually, I uh, one of our members from the Southern California Commodore and Amiga Network. He did a a, a, a video on his video toaster years and years ago using Lightwave. And it was just a few seconds of a Commodore C flying through space. Mm. But it was done, you know, back in old, old, old resolution, in square map resolution, and it was just meant for, it was just, it was not high def or anything like that. Right. So, so he, he, he went back to Lightwave, except Lightwave on a modern computer, <laughs> on a PC, and he redid it, made it, you know, widescreen, he, he gave it shading, he gave it, he gave it, uh, he gave it uh, all kinds of, you know, all kinds of making it nice and smooth, making the. Was the it based off the original there. files? Uh, I don't know if he based it off his original files, mm. but uh, uh, there is a person every year who puts up the Amiga Art Show. Um, yeah, Doug. Yeah, Doug Compton, uh -huh. and the original video is there on Doug Compton's site, or a link to it at least, okay. where you can see the original video. So this is the, the, the new, newer video where he redid this. He put in the starry background. And I had, to t I had to tell him, you know, all these little Star Trek tricks that, <laughs> yes, this is Star Trek based. So I had, to, I had to tell him all these Star Trek tricks. He says, he sends me the, the first video. He has it flying through space. I said, uh, you know that in the original series, the Enterprise is helicoptering in. It's slightly tilted mm -hmm. down while it's coming toward the screen. He says, why would they do that? I said, I don't know, but that's the way it was in the original <laughs> in the original series. So can you have the C, the Commodore C, slightly tilted down as it's coming past the camera? So he did that. And of course, uh, he had the reverse angle on it. And he had the, the stars going the wrong way. I said, no, the stars are supposed to be coming this way. They're, they're supposed to be going that way. And so he had to correct that also. So me being the picky Star Trek person original Star Trek, original series person. There. Okay. So, uh, also, I had to tell, I had to find the sound effect, of course. I said, uh, I need the swish sound effect. I need, okay. Uh, uh, okay. Go to trekcore.com, download the, <laughs> download the sound effect, paste it over out here on my, on my, on my, on my film editor, my, my iMovie editor on the Mac. Right. Okay. Then, and then we have, in the background, we have these moons and planets that he have, has back there. I said, you know, on the original series, <laughs> when Kirk goes to the planet to fight the Gorn, it was one color in the original series. And then when they redid the special effects, it changed its color to a different color. 
No, he didn't pay any attention to that. So he kept the colors the same they were. I went, oh, okay. Okay, so this is Vasquez Rocks. I had to go all the way down to the Los Angeles area. I'm not from the Los Angeles area of California. I'm, I'm from Central Cal California. So it took me the three hour drive to get to Vasquez Rocks on a Friday. Oh, wait a minute, that's right. I was in Stockton, California. So I was not in my area, I was farther north. So it took me six hours to get, that, get down to this park. It's a county park. You can drive into it, it's free entrance. You get there, you go, oh, look at the rocks. And I got there in the springtime, and you know, the rains had just kind of stopped for a little while. I said, oh, I've never been to Vasquez Rocks in the springtime. Uh, there's a little bit of greenery around here instead of dirt and desert. So I, I had to film that. I came in, I came into the Los Angeles County area where this park is uh, situated. <laughs> You're carrying all of that with you. Yeah. So I, I'm driving my car, my car, uh, not, not the station wagon, but my Crown Vic, which is a sedan, <laughs> like the station wagon. Yeah. So I'm driving around here, and to get into Vasquez Park, they have these rutted roads. I'm like, uh-oh, I don't have four-wheel drive, I don't have a high vehicle, uh-oh. So I'm bouncing along there, going, I hope I don't bottom out the sedan. Uh, okay, so I get there, it's 4.30 in the afternoon, the park closes at 5. I went, oh, I only have a few minutes before I have to get out of here. So I rush out of the car, I set up the tripod, I set up the video camera, I set up the, I said, okay, the A1200 right here on the front seat. I have the C64 in the trunk. I have no time to get the C64 out of the trunk. I'll just use the A1200, put the monitor right there, set it up. Uh, oh, right there, I had to film it from that angle because if you don't know for sure, right behind that monitor, there was a car parked behind there. <laughs> People can park anywhere they want right there. I said, no, this is supposed to be a solitary planet. I cannot show a car parked behind, I mean, in the film. Yeah. It makes suspension of disbelief. That's right, the suspension difficult. of disbelief would be gone. Okay, is it going forward? Yeah, it's going forward. Oh yeah, I had to, oh yes, I had to also match footage. So. Yeah, when you see William Shatner in the next shot here, it's film. It's a film quality. There's there's grain. I said, oh, grain. So I have to apply grain to this video here. There we go. And there's William Shatner. Okay, how did I do this? Did I did I with my my computer skills? Did I make it widescreen and and, and no, I just zoomed into a HDMI <laughs> video screen. I said, oh, okay, just do it the old-fashioned way. Film off the monitor. Okay. Oh. In this shot here, in, in this video here, um, of course they have music in the background. You know, the da 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 all that good old Star Trek music. No, I, I couldn't use Star Trek music because that would be copyright infringement. It's okay to use this little film clip, I suppose. I haven't been called dinged by YouTube, but I couldn't include the music. So I had to silence the music and I had to put in footsteps. Fortunately, my video editor, uh oh, it went, it's thinking YouTube. No, think faster, think faster. Oh no. Okay, I had to put the sound of footsteps in, and it's not playing. Play, please. Uh oh. Is that bad? Oh no. I hit the next video. Go back. Oh, hold on. I'll get out of it. No, go back. Dan Wood. No, not Dan Wood. Go back. Oh, here we go, here we go. How many times can you see that? Go to full screen, no. Okay, well you can't hear on the speakers there, because it's too quiet. But I had to put in footsteps, because I said, oh, we need the sound of the crunching footsteps. So I put in the sound of the crunching footsteps. Yeah. And then, of course, we have William Shender. Uh, throwing his styrofoam rock, <laughs> yeah. and of course, oop, oh, okay, all of it. Ah, can I go back a little bit right here? The tricks of filmmaking. Okay, and then go back a little bit more. Okay, so William Shatner throws his rock, and I went, oh, okay. I have no music, and I have footsteps, so I need the sound of William Shatner making some kind of grunt while he throws the rock. Uh, well, the speakers are not loud enough,
but I had to imitate William Shatner's voice. I had to do a grunt into the microphone. <laughs> but, oh, okay, William Shatner probably wouldn't go down on it. I mean, we wouldn't go down on the grunt. He'd probably go up on the grunt. He'd go, uh? Or something like that. So, so yeah. So, yes, I had to do William Shatner's voice. Uh, sorry, Bill. <laughs> okay. Oh, this styrofoam rock. Okay. Uh, I went to Michael's. I got some uh, styrofoam, uh, this ball, a hard ball, styrofoam ball. Oh, oh, okay. I'll shape it into the the, the rock that William Shatner threw, <laughs> which was kind of rectangular-like, kind of polyhedral-like. So I tried cutting that styrofoam. Uh-uh. I can't cut through the styrofoam again. <laughs> Darn it all, this, this, this thing's really hard. Do I have a bandsaw? No, I don't have a bandsaw. I don't have any kind of saw through it. I went, oh, okay. The serrated knife is not working. Never mind. I'm just going to paint it, <laughs> paint it with Michael's paint, leave it brown. Yeah. And of course, I had to put in the sound effect of it hitting the A1200. Oh, this was done in the driveway of the house. <laughs> so this was not done in Vasquez Park because I had to get out of Vasquez Park really fast. I only had. 20 minutes and I had to get out of there and and so filmed this basically at the same time of the day with the shadows and I took it was about 10 minutes of filming hitting a styrofoam <laughs> rock against the A1200 okay. oh the A1200 moved out of frame oh the A1200 moved this way oh okay the the rock didn't hit the correct way oh the rock didn't hit th this way so it took me 10 minutes of filming this various camera angles if you were a TikToker, it would have taken you the weekend. <laughs> oh, well, it took me several days. Okay, so again, my friend, uh, he put in he put in this nice animation there. And then he put in this. And of course, ooh. Super show. Oh, so I had RJ. I went to RJ's place all the way in Redwood City, California, traveling over to the Bay Area. I said, RJ, uh, you want to film various various, <laughs> talking about the Commodore LA Super Show, just talking to the mic of my video camera. So he did several versions of it, and we used that version there. Uh, sorry guys, I didn't bring the audio. <laughs> I didn't bring the audio, I should have brought the audio. Of him doing his various versions of that announcement. Oh, okay. This, this, okay. Looking back at the original Star Trek episode, when the Metron speaks to Kirk, at the very end of the episode, he's dressed in this kind of like Greek toga, and he's behind these basalt rocks. I went, oh, in Redwood City, we don't have a wall of basalt, basalt rocks, not like the desert. Uh, we don't, I can't dress, <laughs> dress RJ in a toga, sorry. Okay. And I told RJ, I said, RJ, you have to act benevolent. <laughs> and he says, I don't know what that means. I said, just be, you know, act nice. He said, oh, okay. So we did like three or four takes of this. And the, the wind was blowing, this is the evening. The wind was blowing 20, 30, 40 miles an hour. Then, oh, my microphone is picking up too much wind noise, even though I had, you know, huge windscreens over it. I said, oh, okay. And I can't, I can't redub this in studio with RJ. I said, no, it has to be done now. Okay. So this is like take number four, because the first three takes, well, Actually, I would have preferred take number three, but take number three, it was perfect. RJ was benevolent. He he had a slight, uh, slight optimism in his voice instead of this serious take right here, and 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 it was perfect except for a little gnat, a little insect crawling across the lens. I went, <laughs> oh no no. I didn't see it until later on. I said, oh, there's no way. I don't have the means to erase that insect <laughs> going across the lens. No, I have no capability of doing that. So we have RJ looking at the camera, a little more serious than what I thought, speaking the lines of the Metro. There's hope for you yet. Perhaps several thousand years. We shall, we shall reach an agreement. You're still half savage, but there's hope. <laughs> and that's the end of the commercial. Woo! So <laughs> it took just to do that, just to do that little less than one minute commercial. It took ten hours of editing to get that together. Yeah. So yeah, that was a lot of work. 
<laughs> I don't want to do that for next year's uh, <laughs> Commodore commercial. I'm thinking of getting for the next Commodore commercial. I'm thinking of getting a dog. A dog. <laughs> I'll put a see a Commodore over here and an Amiga over here, and I'll hide some biscuits behind them, <laughs> behind the computers. And whichever the dog goes to, the Commodore or the Amiga. Or, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Commodore wins or Amiga wins. Huh. So that'll be the commercial for next year. Easy, simple, yeah. not much editing. There you go. Don't stepping on keyboards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, Robert, did you, yes. did you choose the Vasquez, Vasquez Rocks because that's where that scene was filmed in yes. TOS? Yes. Oh. I had to get to oh, the same hey, place. Yeah. No <laughs> green screen. I had to be there. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Even though I can do green screen, but my green screen is kind of fuzzy. You can see the edges. Okay? That's not real. <laughs> okay, thanks everybody. Hey, Robert. Thank you. Thank you.